Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and just a quick intro for this one from the desk before we get out on the road to see what these updates are all about. And if you're the owner of a Karoo 2 or a Karoo 3. Uh, new Karoo. What, they're still calling it the new Karoo? Yeah. It's over a year old. They've lost that privilege. Okay, so if you're the owner of a Karoo 2 or the new Karoo, quite a significant update has landed today. Here are all the notes, lots of text, lots of things. What does all this mean? Well, I've deciphered all this and put it in a video to show you what it's all about. The two takeouts you need to know is they've got an app store. Well, they're calling it the, what do they call it? The native app library or an extensions library. App store by any other name is now on the main screen of these units. So that you no longer have to side load or stand on one leg and rub your tummy and do all those kind of things to get things installed. Approved apps or approved third party add-ons can be installed straight from these head units. And secondly, the way you set up your data screens and arrange things has changed quite a lot. Took me a little bit to get my head around exactly what they were doing. I got it done, I could change things out on the bike. Let's have a look at that right now. Okay, once installed, this new update will put an extensions tile right here on the main menu. So down there on the bottom, touching that. Now mine defaulted to this screen here with all the extensions I've already installed. I needed to pull down and scroll up to see the extensions that I hadn't installed yet. To then install, well, my windsock here. All the others, um, you can click through and just read the release notes and details on that. There's not a lot of detail or sorting or anything at all from the main screen there. Maybe jump on Google and have a search for what those are all about. Once installed, it's over to profiles. And here is the second major change with this update. And it's how the data fields are organized. So previously there were data field layout templates. Now you've got to drag and drop your data fields. So you can see here, I hold, press and hold, and I can drag that full width data field to anywhere I want. So that's now a half width data field. I can pull elevation up to the top and well, it didn't quite drop it to the top. Now I'll drop it to the top. And I have two full width uh, data screens or data fields. I can touch those, click on edit, and then add There's some shortcuts along the top there that I can't quite get my head around just yet. Um, but again, you can select numeric, visual, and zone color for those ones that have zone color. So quite a big change to how these uh, fields are selected car back and configured but I'm sure you'll get the picture if you're a hammerhead user Karoo user from way back or even a new Karoo user which is the Karoo 3 you'll figure it out pretty quickly uh, from here you can just touch those drag those around and the windsock field is what I went and put to the test today because I wanted to put it up against another car back I wanted to put it up against uh, the Windfield app, or the Windfield edition there, that I've got on the Garmin Edge units, which I really, really like. So, all that out of the way, let's go have a look at Windfields working in real time for the loop that I wrote. Alrighty, off I roll. Now on screen here, I have the Karoo 3 on the left with the My Windsock configured, just showing the wind direction, or the technically the real time, or close enough to real time wind direction. I also have the three second power zone visual field, half size visual field. I believe that's a new thing as well there on screen. Over on the right of that, I have the Edge 840 running my, well, beloved Windfield Connect IQ application or add on, which I can use in conjunction with the maps, as you see here on screen, to know exactly where the wind's going to be blowing if I was to turn a corner. So here, turning right. Oh, good save on the back there and the wind arrow points now off to the left. Perfect. Okay, that does change color on the My Windsock and everything appears to be working just fine. Now I'll get into a little bit more detail in a moment about these fields and where you can place them and how you can change them in real time. But let's just ride through this dust devil. We call them willy willies here in Australia. There it is, drone, good save drone. Okay, I'll do a U-turn just up the road here, right near another illegal dump of rubbish. Welcome to Ballarat. And the arrow should spin around and point now to the right of the screen for the wind direction in real time. Perfect. Working as expected. So I guess my windsock will be staying on screen. Okay, that's just one of the add-ons of the few that they've approved at this point in time. Hopefully in the App Store, they will 
have some kind of sorting or some kind of information or something a little bit more in depth because as soon as that app store or the extension store has 10, 15, 20, maybe 100 add-ons, it's going to be very difficult to find things. So a good start for that. Okay, a little further up the road, let's have a look at some of the field uh, configurations we can do on the fly and double tapping the fields as well. But before we get to that, let me do another right hand turn. Wind pointing south or wind heading south coming from the north. And lovely, working as expected. All right, let's jump ahead up the road into a headwind and go through some of these data field changes. Okay, some further discovery with this update and what it does. If you were to double tap on a field that has certain smoothing intervals, it will change it to the next smoothing interval. So for example, there I'm tapping on power, 10 second, 30 second, 20 minute power, 60 minute power, double tapping again gives you real time or one second power. I like it on three second. Okay, that's on the half width field. Up the top there, double tapping the same thing, five second power, double tap, okay, gets me to 10 second power, 30 second power, 20 minute power. That's for the full width uh, zone visual field of that. So tapping through those. Uh, other ones that you can tap on, Cadence also has smoothing. I'm not quite sure. There we go. Gears also has a different visual representation. So double tapping on that goes from the visual gears to the numbered gears or numeric gears once configured. If you have a gear set that... Uh, allows for that, or group set that allows for that. No battery data, I'm not sure what's going on there. It's a SRAM group set and a SRAM head unit, so that's not changing. Um, okay, we can press and hold the data field to change in real time. That's another great addition, very similar to that on a Garmin Edge unit. Selecting from there, you can go numeric, you can go visual, or you can go zone color. Now that's zone color is another addition to this add-on today. Zone color for heart rate and power. Okay, so I've put color for heart rate on there. Again, very much like what we see on Wahoo units, or the newer Wahoo units. So look, to be honest, this is the kind of update I'd love to have seen on the ACE. Press and hold data field changes and an app store slash extensions library. Maybe we'll see it uh, released for that unit soon. Okay, switching across here, again, visual zone color for power if I wanted to add that and there we go I've got color for zone power as well excellent okay going a little harder there it goes to orange right now we can also change the size of these data fields and the layouts in real time it's a little trickier though to do as you're riding along and I do manage to figure it out it's press and hold the bottom left key on the side you can go to the profile types, data pages, while you are riding and modify these. And again, drag and drop, we can make wind a full width field. We'll go back to the ride. But unfortunately, it hides the chevron of your current... Well, I shouldn't say the word chevron. It hides the arrow of your current location. So that doesn't quite work. I'm zooming out, zooming in. Again, zoom out, zoom in. One finger tap, double finger tap is best in class for any head unit. I do love that on the Karoo. Jumping ahead to a left-hand turn, and those arrows should spin around nicely, indicating the wind is still coming from the north, except I'm now heading northwest. Perfect. Working as expected. Now those full width data fields, so the My Wind Sock and the three second power visual, just taking up way too much of that screen real estate and I can't even see where I've ridden. I can see where I'm heading, but that's about it. So in real time here, I will get back into the menus or the uh, profile configuration. Bottom left, press and hold, settings, uh, not routes. Back on that. Profiles, gravel. Data pages, map, lucky I'm on a trail here, not the road. With the benefit of sitting here watching me do this in real time and not being on a bike, enjoyed the frustration I had in trying to drag these fields to the top and not just pressing the small little up arrow, which does put the fields at the top. 
So I tried a few times here, I uh, made them side by side and then pressed the up arrow, the black up arrow on screen, which puts the data fields at the top of the map. Excellent. All right, job done. Let's go back and have a look at what that looks like on screen. Back to the ride profile in real time and excellent. That's a much better position. Car's beeping away because they're on the road beside me. But that's a much better configuration, I think. But anyhow, there's a quick overview of me out on a Friday afternoon ride and how those things can be configured in real time. Uh, the drone, uh, Hover Air Pro Max, doing very, very well in the wind, but it was about now it was running out of battery. So there we have it, some very nice quality of life updates, the Karoo 2 and the Karoo 3. Yes, it is the Karoo 3. Some things I really would have liked to see them roll out 12 months ago when the K3 launched. Anyhow, here we are. And according to the feedback I'm reading over on Reddit, thumbs up, people are liking this update. Look, now here's the part where I do, you know, give me a thumbs up and give me a subscribe. Uh, it's very important on this one because my Karoo content really doesn't do that well. So if you are a Karoo user, you've watched the video, you've learned something here, you're going out and riding and having a better time, please hit that like, hit that subscribe, Leave a comment, do all the things, it really helps out. And have a great weekend.